And we're back. We'll do it live. We'll do it live here on Tuesday, 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 September 17th, 20 and the 24 in the Mayan calendar. It's 1.35 p.m. in the farm fields of Valparaiso, Indiana. Hey, what do we got? Another new all-time high. We got 2.224, 2.22. Two, four. So we've got that going for us. And oh, I know you're going to shake your head. You're going to roll your eyes. You're going to click off the YouTuber. You're going to throw your phone out the window, but I've sold off nearly everything. What? <laughs> Look how few positions I have right now. Sell, sell, sell. Why? I just want a little bit of a reset. You know, I've had a couple of different, I've tried all kinds of different trades, experiments along the way, currently experimenting with a couple of new ideas, some thoughts, checking out um, shorter timeframes for maybe, would you call a one day trade a swing trade? Whatever, you know, I guess a swing trade would qualify at one day plus. So that's the current thoughts, um, but the all-time high makes me feel good. I just also wanted to be positioned for this next pivot. Which way are things going to go once the Fed begins to lower rates? So in fact, let's look at the CME. I think we're still currently tracking at a 50 basis points, 50 basis points off the board uh, tomorrow when Uncle JP takes the microphone. Oh, it's down to 63%. But right now, 63% probability of the Fed dropping not 25 basis points, but 50 basis points. Now, that coupled with what they have to say could could hurt the market as far as the immediate. We may, in fact, see some selling going on into the Fed meeting tomorrow. So I want to keep my eye on that and also be positioned that maybe it doesn't even matter. So I can watch the reaction and then make my moves from there. So I've yet to see in the, I don't know, 18 months that I've been trading and selling options, I've yet to see the CME Fed Watch be wrong. It's been right every time, which basically tells me the Fed doesn't just do what it wants to do. The Fed does what the market tells it to do, which is what you and I would feel better with. I don't know why you looked over at Terry. Terry's not even here today. Terry. Terry's my imaginary friend. He has, he questions my trades, but you know, he's in my corner. Um, So yeah, I did sell off, brought up the, what do we got? 4.8 million in buying power and just over 2 million in cash. Hello. Collecting 5% until tomorrow. So likely that it's, we're looking at uh, 50 basis points. Um, which is good for me on my other side of things, which is real estate. And But let's look at what the activity has gone on. Whoa, didn't want to show you that. Yeah, that's a surprise. But while we got it up, I wanted to show you the losses that I have locked in to offset the gains so far this year. And you've seen, if you've been watching the channel, you've seen all these Tesla, Rivian, Excellus, um, DocuSign, Norwegian Cruise Lines, Unity, UCO, which is the bull on USO, Oil, Sigmund Lithium, Bit Digital, and then today I pulled the plug on Devon Energy. Wow, wow, wow! So they were up today, and they may they'll probably now go up like five bucks a share <laughs> over the next few trading sessions. But again, it was like eh, enough butt stinking. I'll just move on with my life. And I haven't, re- I honestly, and you know me, I've got two superpowers. One is I don't suffer from FOMO and the others I've never been bored. So when I trade these off, it doesn't matter when Tesla rides back up. Uh, it really doesn't. I'm not saying that just to make myself feel better. It's actually true. And then it also frees up some mental space because I'm not a mental giant. I'm closer to a mental uh, midget. So I, <laughs> I got to keep things clear up there or as clear as possible. So let's bold that. So we got $142,509 of losses on the board to offset this year's um, gains. So I mental space cleared and some hedge against my taxes. So this is what went on yesterday. We discussed, I thought Bitcoin's um, chart was looking really good. So we had it up here. I've already pulled off the. the Fibonacci 
retracements. Um, but I think the next move now is down. So from where we're at here, we had a nice run to 61. Need a little bit of a pullback now. Not that we're going to get it. I mean, depending on the reactions that go on tomorrow, uh, Bitcoin could skyrocket or it could dump down into low 50s, maybe even into the 40s by the t as soon as tomorrow and as late as next week. So I don't want to alarm anything. Wait, you just said it might go up, then it might go down. Yeah, that's exactly right. So it was looking really ripe yesterday. Um, and we got a huge move. That was the blind squirrel trade. I like making those. So, you know, to blind, even a blind squirrel on occasion finds a nut. So we did buy a thousand shares of uh, iBit at 3275. And then I sold it uh, for 3350. And it ended up, where's it at now? It's probably, I, again, I don't suffer from FOMO, so I can look it up without crying in my milk. So it's a way higher than 3350. I know it. Look at that. Where did I get out? Where did I get out? Uh, way down here. I got out way down here and I missed the actual boom. Boom with the attitude. So it's at 3470. Oh, well, I made 750 bucks, put it in my skinny jeans and I'm fine with it. I uh, did buy 2,000 shares of Bitto yesterday, 1743. And then I did sell them today at 1845, those 2,000 shares. So I did profit $2,020. This morning, I got into Sox S, which is a bear on semiconductors. I bought at 2333, set my stop at 2285. Then I'm like, hey, I'm good at 2440 and locked in 1,070 profit. Let's look at that just to see. I don't, once I sell them, I don't even really look unless it's for um, entertainment purposes for you only. So let's see. Oh, I may, oh, that's not much of a difference. I'm like, hey, I sold at the top. No, I missed the top a little, but I did sell it right there at 2440. And I think I was in the trade for an hour. Let's look. No, maybe. So let's see. We bought three hours ago and then I put in the stop loss, canceled that and then sold. So I was in for an hour. Is that an hour? Is there, is my math off? 1107 central time bought. And... 12.13 sold. So yeah, so just over an hour we had that trade on. And right now, I'm, you know, I feel really good about where I sold because I don't even have to watch it anymore. I don't have to worry about not making money on the trade. And that's exactly the, was the same mindset with the iBit. I'm like, I'm just taking my money now. And yeah, I missed probably another, what, thousand bucks? Almost a thousand bucks, but that's okay. So we've had a nice uh, nice few trades there. Need to put my Devon's cell up here as well um, for the record. Actually, I know what I sold it. I wrote it down somewhere. No, I know where I sold. It was 5K shares or 5K at 4040. 5k at 40 40 and i think i even took it off my watch list because i was like bye 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 felicia but we'll just pull it up to let me pull it up here for my own entertainment purposes and yours because again this is not trading advice this is not investment advice in any way this is oh it's at 40 45 so see i've missed that and of course and devin will probably go to 45 bucks now but that's okay i'm out I'm out and I'm moving on with my life, checking out the reactions um, at the FOMC tomorrow. Let's take a look. We already looked at the Bitcoin. Um, if we go from, let's see, let's see this target here. Let's get the retracement going live. I need, I think it's because the memory on my computer is way down in its whiskey that maybe it moves slow in these scenarios or I might need to get just better software for youtube videos where are we at leave it right left. no too low let's go a little higher right there is fine all right there's fine so i'd be looking at i don't know a minimum of yeah bitcoin doesn't move in minimums does it so let's shoot for a flat 60 how's that Sixty thousand. Next move down 
target minimum. That's what I'm thinking on the Bitcoin. Let's go to silver. Silver, ugh, see how close it came? Remember we talked about this yesterday. I was looking only for a minimum retrace to 78, the 7860, which would have been 3046. And where did we hit? Like 3050 maybe? But that might be it. That It doesn't, of course, give you exact numbers for the most part. Um, it's just probabilities. So I'm going to continue to watch silver closely. Eh. Yeah, I'll continue to watch it closely. My next move in silver, though, will be to uh, probably buy 2,000 shares of AGQ, which is a bull on silver with a tight stop into tomorrow. Because tomorrow could easily skyrocket gold and silver. And I might want to be... I might want to be interested in some of that move, but it could be a pop and a drop, you know, and that's what I predict as far as right when the announcement's made of a 50 basis points rate cut. I think the whole market's just going to pop, but then we're going to have a drop and we'll see, you know, is it a pop and then the big guys sell off the hedgies and the family offices that all the, um, they call it the smart money. And then retail's like, what's going on? Then the retail investor decides to sell off as well. So that's why I am almost in all cash in this account. You know, my IRAs and stuff are still just rolling. Uh, okay. So then IWM, um, I made a trade last week. Uh, TZA, we bought, it was Friday, put by uh, fifteen dollar put by ten contracts expires Friday, and I paid five hundred bucks. Right now, that trades down in its whiskey. Let's look at it because it's own IWM, which is this is a uh, bear against IWM, has only gone up since then. <laughs> TZA, there it is. We're down two forty. That's actually not bad. I paid five hundred, so we still have forty forty eight percent in there. Or I should say it's down forty eight percent. I still am holding out hope on. Um, the TZA, and I still think my Bitto shares are going to be safe by the end of the week, even though I'm way down on my whiskey right now on the 1750 calls on my remaining 6,000 shares because I did sell the 2,000 shares I bought yesterday. I've sold those today as we went through. So what am I looking at? I just put up the uh, fibs on here. Here's my target. I'm looking at a minimum of uh, 217.48 on IWM to 214. I don't think it's going to get down to 214.94, but it would depend on that pop and drop tomorrow if indeed that's what happens. I could just get blown out of the water and everything just runs through the rest of the week. So all the options are on the table. I'm just looking at the probabilities. So I may also what did we what did I may also buy um some TZA with a very close to the vest stop where we at on it right now. Oh, 1399. That's what my target was is to get it back in the thirteens. Whoa, I just missed it. <laughs> I'll wait. I'll try to be patient right here. I'd love to see a 13 handle. Um, and then I might buy, I might buy 2000 shares, you know, with a tight stop on that, which I could get stopped out before it makes its run. So maybe I won't be, too, it'll be tight, but not too tight. How's that? I don't know. You just like to say a lot of words. I really do, but I like to say those words to you. Oh, another funny thing today I found. This is a picture on the Packers website, and there's the Fab Five. <laughs> I sent that to all the on the Fab Five uh, text thread, and then they all, like Maya did a zoom in on my face, and they've been making fun of it ever since. So there's your friend Bart. There is Sparkle Barbie, there's Kid 2, there's Kid 1, and there's Kid 3 with his Bart Star jersey on. And then I told you about that family of five from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Looks like we got one guy either doing the, um, what was that thing called that Cam Newton used to do and all the kids started doing it? Um, <laughs> you know you're old when you can't think of that. I think he's doing that or he's sneezing. So there's the three boy Packer fans. Here's the dad Packer fan that I said looked like Brett Favre on his profile. There are the two, the mom and the daughter Colts fans. And this girl actually has her long sleeve shirt off with only a sports bra on it, which we encouraged her to do because she was, it was so hot at the beginning of the game and she was pouring sweat and basically in tears, like crying about how hot it was. And, uh, 
to the rescue is always Sparkle Barbie. He's like, hey, why don't you go ahead and, and pull that shirt off? Um, not, nobody's going to look behind, look back and see you, and none of us care. Um, so she did that, and she got much cooler. And then uh, before halftime, uh, these are the strategic seats that I love because even on a noon game, they're going to be in the shade before halftime. So then you don't have this the uh, and you don't have the sun in your eyes like on the other side of the stadium you have the sun in your eyes almost the whole game on a noon game so very strategic there thought you you thought you'd like that <laughs> all right there we are 2224 almost everything sold off got a few positions all making my butt stink right now but i still have confidence in the TZA and the Bido UCO i think is a lost cause but there's no sense i think i'd get like 10 bucks if i uh, sold it close right now but you could have an unfortunate event in the Middle East, which would then um, pay off big time on my 2950 call. So that's what we got. Thanks for tuning in. Like, subscribe, comment, share with a lovable friend, and I'll see you in the next video.